Back on Titans Talk, talking about the now eight and six Titans destiny in their own hands the final couple of weeks of the season. Don't forget, Titans now play at Jacksonville on Saturday. Saturday this week because of the Christmas holiday on Sunday. Much of the NFL schedule moved up a day to Saturday. It'll be Tennessee at Jacksonville Saturday at noon. Watch it on News Channel 5. Then week 17, New Year's Day, back on Sunday, New Year's Day against the Texans, tentatively scheduled for noon. Although, if that game becomes for the division title, totally possible that that game could get flexed in the prime time that night. Phone lines are still open. 737-7767 is the number, but let's revisit the game yesterday. Coldest temperature in Titans franchise history. One degree at kickoff. Even a more epic finish, however. Let's check it out. Titans trailed 14-0, 17-7 into the fourth quarter. Got to 17-10. Fourth and five, DeMarco Murray. Back shoulder throw from Marcus Mariota. Nearly a touchdown. Derrick Henry punches it in. Titans go for two, but don't get it. The defense, though, hands them the ball back. Minute seven to go. Mariota leads him down the field. Great completion to Delaney Walker to the 35. And that sets up Ryan Suckup. After missing one, he got a reprieve on the timeout from Andy Reid, and he drilled that one. One yard shy of his career long, 53 yards against his old team, 1917. Titans win it. What a comeback. What a win. What a season for the Titans now, 8-6, and six, and still in first place in the AFC South. A monster win yesterday in the frigid temperatures at Arrowhead Stadium. Jonathan Hutton was on the sideline at Arrowhead Stadium yesterday. He joined us as he so often does, always does, after the road trips. Yesterday, we needed to give him a little hot chocolate, maybe a blanket when he walked into the building as he continued to thaw out after being outside in the cold all day yesterday. But he joined us and helped us get to the keys to the game last night. The keys to the biggest win in a long, long time for the Titans. Time now for our keys to the game, sponsored by your Middle Tennessee Honda dealers. Jonathan, it was an epic comeback for the ages Sunday at Arrowhead for the Titans, but it was all set up by a defense that stood tall once again in the red zone. The Titans defense had Kansas City make two trips inside the 10 yard line. The Chiefs came away with no points. That was because of a great defensive effort. They came away with an interception. LaShawn Sims with his first of his career. They also had that big goal line stand in the first half. And their effort allowed the offense to warm up on this frigid day and finally get going. Marcus Mariota turned the ball over twice, but it, when it really mattered in the fourth quarter, he was clutch. They went to that no huddle, the hurry up offense, which really helped spark that, that pace of play for Marcus Mariota. He was patient in the pocket, delivered the football on multiple throws to Delaney Walker, spread the ball around, led that game winning drive. And get this, Titans started the day one for seven on third down, but converted five on their final final three possessions, all scoring drives. And how about Ryan Suckup nearly matching his career long to win the game in brutal kicking conditions, as you know. Yeah, it, it was cold <laughs> in Kansas City, and he nailed, he crushed a 53-yarder right down the middle against his former team. Standing out on the arrowhead, in arrowhead, he drilled the game winner. He was very emotional after the game, and uh, who could who could fault him for that? It was a, a game winner he'll never forget. Biggest play of this season so far, one of the biggest kicks in Titans history. Jonathan, uh, last night on the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central. More from him coming up here, but back to the phones we go. James, hello. Uh, yeah, I just want to make a couple comments. Sure. Um, you know, I'm just happy to see that the Titans aren't getting all the penalty calls like in past years. It's like they're playing a lot smarter football now, I guess, that's the coaching. And um, another comment I really didn't agree with the going for the two points at the end of that game. It just seemed too risky, and I hope he doesn't do anything like that in the playoff game. So. Yeah, no, no, I agree with that. And I, my guess is after doing it yesterday, 
He probably won't. Uh, he said it was very much a feel thing about it. But I still go back to, and this is the whole point of what, what I wrote on NewsChannel5.com. Check it out if, if you feel like. But yeah. he he's built such a culture about the belief and being aggressive, which I think he had to do. Because remember, he took over a team that just hadn't won anything. They were looking to win. They were hungry for wins because there just hadn't been any for a while. He had to make them believe that this group could come together and win. And his whole thing was, we're going to be aggressive, and we're not going to back down, and we're going to play to win at all times. And I thought yesterday was where the rubber met the road there. And he had to, at least in that call, kind of go with what he'd been preaching. And fortunately for him and fortunately for them, the fact that they didn't convert on that one play, they were still able to come back and overcome it. I don't think he has to do that again. He proved it to them in that play. So I don't think if given the same situation against the Texans or heck this weekend in Jacksonville or in the playoffs, I don't think he'll do that again. But I I think that was as much about adding on to the message of the program he's trying to build here and the long-term winner he's trying to build as it was simply about trying to go up 18-17 with 3-12 to go. Yeah, that's true, and I still say you still play smart football at all times, and that, you know, I didn't think that was smart. I mean, I, I think just, you know, I play a high-level pool, and I believe defense, you know, you play defense, you look at your odds, and I just think that wasn't the right thing. I mean, yeah. other than that, I think they're having a great season. I think they're doing much better. The penalties, we've lost so many games due to penalties pulling us back. That, I'm just really happy with them this year. Yeah, no question, James. I think you've hit on it. I I mean, part of the other thing that Mike Malarkey's done is he's created a culture of accountability. And if you even look back to last year when he was an interim coach and went 2-7, and it it wasn't pretty. But one thing the Titans did do in that time is they went from being one of the most penalized teams in the league in the first half of the year under Ken Wisenhunt to one of the least penalized teams in the league in the second half of the year. And this year, same thing. Had a few penalty issues early on, but they've really cleaned it up over the last several weeks. This is a team that's playing good football, and they're built for December and January success because they can run the ball. This is a team that you can believe in this time of year. So it'll be interesting for sure. So much on the table in front of them now over the next couple of weeks. We're going to take another break here. Phone lines are still open, 737-7767 if you'd like to get in. When we come back, the locker room report from yesterday in Kansas City. Go inside the numbers a bit as well. Stay tuned. Much more Titans talk on the way next on News Channel 5+. Plus.